Because he lives, 
That's why we're here. Because he lives. That's why you're here. Because he lives. That's why we're in a sanctuary today. And yes, we got some sadness, but we've got some joy. One of the things I want you to help all of us with today is go, hmm, okay, hmm, like this, all right? It's called a smile, yeah, okay? Celebrate. Uh, we throw the words around. Us preachers like to talk about it, but we seldom get that spirit. And I'd like us to truly all of you that are participating this morning, in whatever way, celebrate the life of Mary Magdalene Hofer Glanzer. Did I get it right? I got it right. Okay. Let's pray. In these next minutes that we have together, Lord, fill us with a sense of joy for the goodness and the love that Mary filled so many lives with. We are here to celebrate her life, to mark this as a time of deep remembrance in respect to a woman of God whom we say exhibited a life well lived. For this time together, we praise your glorious name. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Uh, let's share now the slideshow that's been prepared. And Chris, where's Chris at? There's Chris. Didn't you put this together? Yeah. <laughs> okay, don't be so modest. And you're like your, your grandmother. Okay, yeah, you're like your grandmother. Let's share that together. From the seeds of faith we planted long ago So many the hearts in season With every prayer they've grown He has made them ready But we must bring them home Lord of the harvest Place of fire in me Servant to need now
everything you Jesus One day you will bind every wound The former things shall all pass away No more tears One day you'll make sense of it all Jesus One day every question resolved Every anxious thought left behind No more fear When we all get to heaven What a day of rejoicing that will be When we all see Jesus We'll sing and shout the victory And one day we'll be free, free indeed Jesus, one day all the struggle will cease And we will see your glory revealed On that day And when we all get to heaven What a day of rejoicing that will be When we all see Jesus We'll sing and shout the victory If I had only known the last time would be the last time I would have put off all the things I had to do I would have stayed a little longer Held on a little tighter Now what I'd give for one more day with you Cause there's a wound here in my heart where something's missing And they tell me that it's gonna heal with time But I know you're in a place where all your wounds have been erased And knowing yours are healed is healing mine The only scars in heaven There won't be to me and you There'll be no such thing as broken And all the old will be made new And the thought that makes me smile now Even as the tears fall down Is that the only scars in heaven Or on the hands that hold you now I know the road you walked was anything but easy You picked up your share of scars along the way 
Well, but now you're standing in the sun You fought your fight and your race is run The pain is all a million miles away The only scars in heaven It won't belong to me and you There'll be no such thing as broken me smile now, even as the tears fall down, is that the only scars in heaven, yeah, are on the hands that hold you now, there's not a day goes by that I don't see you. Hi, Grandma. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> She's just sitting there Good morning. doing it. Oh. My goodness, was that a surprise? That was the point. Oh my. Even dear. Oh. You live on in all the better parts of me. Until I'm standing with you in the sun I'll fight this fight and this race I'll run Until I finally see what you can see Oh, the only scars in heaven They won't belong to me and you There'll be no such thing as broken all the old will be made new And the thought that makes me smile now And even as the tears fall down Is that the only scars in heaven Or on the hands that hold you now Chris, thank you, thank you, thank you. That was terrific. I saw some, some people I hadn't seen for a long time, like uh, Lloyd and Darlene. Did you see them up there? Okay. And uh, uh, Lorene, uh, where's Cheryl at? You were a little younger in this picture, Cheryl. Uh, uh, wasn't that you? <laughs> By the way, Carol, you got beat out. I thought Turkey Ridge was the longest that somebody drove. Somebody drove 10 hours from the Twin Cities to be here uh, this morning. I think she gets the prize, okay? I think she gets the prize. Scotty, you were in that. Did you know, did you recognize yourself? Yeah, okay. What a beautiful tribute, what a wonderful uh, memory. Hopefully you saw maybe yourself or some friends, but you saw a glimpse of the life of a very special lady that we are celebrating today. Let's continue. We're going to have a scripture reading from the Psalms and then a life sketch from Catherine. So just kind of come up and do your thing. So this was Grandma's, one of Grandma's favorite passages. She had many, but this one is one that we all remember. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies, and you have anointed my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Okay. 
Mary Magdalene Hofer Glanzer was born on August 5th, 1933, to Michael K. and Anna J. Walter Hofer on a farm south of Bridgewater, South Dakota. She joined her sister, Catherine Elizabeth. Her father was afflicted with rheumatoid arthritis and passed away at the very young age of 42 years. Being raised by her mother and grandmother, they taught her Christian values and made a significant impact on her life. Morning devotions were a must, and Mary continued that throughout her life. She was a prayer warrior for her family. Upon her profession of faith, Mary was baptized on August 3, 1948, by Reverend David W. Shetter. She became a lifelong member of the Salem MB Church. One of her favorite verses was Isaiah 12, 2. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord God is my strength and song, and he has become my salvation. Mary graduated from Bridgewater High School in 1951. She attended Freeman Junior College for one year and obtained a teaching certificate. She taught country school for two years. On June 20th, 1954, Emmanuel Willard Glanzer and Mary Magdalene Hofer were joined in holy matrimony at Pioneer Hall in Freeman, South Dakota. They lived in Lincoln, Nebraska for one year and then moved to a farm south of Bridgewater for one year. In 1957, they moved to the family farm. Emmanuel and Mary had the privilege of celebrating 65 years of marriage. Emmanuel passed away on October 30th, 2019. Emmanuel and Mary were blessed with three children, Susan K., Timothy James, and Thomas Lee. They also played a big role in raising their grandson, Christopher Lee. Mary was an excellent cook and loved to bake. She was always sharing what she had made with others. Very rarely could you walk into her kitchen and not have some type of baked treat waiting for you. She also enjoyed flowers, gardening, and canning. She made the best dill pickles, and her strawberry pretzel salad was enjoyed by all. She truly loved being a farmer's wife and was involved with the day-to-day -day operations of the farm. Church was a very important part of Mary's life. She served in many capacities over her lifetime. She sang in the church choir and other small groups. She taught Sunday school for many years and held different offices within the Women's Missionary Society. The family served as church custodians for several years. Mary's last Sunday to attend church was August 29th, 2021. It was a very special day for her as she was able to witness her granddaughter-in-law and great-granddaughter be baptized. Mary's greatest joy was to watch her grandchildren participate in sports, music, drama, and other activities. She rarely missed an event and was very proud of all of them. She so appreciated her children and their families. On September 13th, 2021, Mary broke her femur and needed additional care. She transitioned to Oakview Terrace Nursing Home in October and resided there until her death. In Mary's 89 years, she lived a life filled with Christ's love and grace, which she poured out to family and friends. She loved the Lord, and we are grateful for the assurance that on August 18th, 2022, 2022, with family by her side, she made her journey to be with her Savior, Jesus Christ. Mary was welcomed in heaven by her husband, Emmanuel, her parents, Michael K. and Anna J. Hofer, great-grandson, Darren Lee Glanzer, her parents-in-law, Jacob H. and Lavina Glanzer, her sister, Catherine Kleinsaucer, her brothers-in-law, Amos J. Kleinsaucer, Johnny Glanzer, James Glanzer, Donald Glanzer, Sam E. Hofer, Michael D. Hofer, and her nephew, Michael B. Kleinsaucer. Grateful for having shared her life and her love are her daughter, Susan and husband, Steve Hopkins, son, Tim Glanzer, and wife, Chantel, son, Tom Glanzer, grandson, Christopher Glanzer, and wife, Catherine, great-granddaughter, Anna Glanzer, and special friend, Louis Ferminger, and great-grandson, Paul Glanzer, grandson, Michael Becker, and wife, Alicia, great-grandchildren, Holly, Shelby, Ellie, and Blake Becker, granddaughter Brooklyn Becker, expecting Mary's eighth great-grandchild this fall, and husband Shane, granddaughter Haley Lentz and husband Nicholas, granddaughter Ash Ashley Weber and husband Jarrett, and granddaughter Jamie Glanzer. 
Her sisters-in-law, Lois Hofer, Lucille Hofer, Donna Glanzer, and Letha Glanzer, and many nephews and nieces. As we get ready for the uh, next musical selection, this was pretty special, and we've been talking about that. Uh, this was chosen uh, specifically to theme with what I'm going to be sharing in a few minutes. I don't know how many of you have heard the song they're about to sing, but pay close attention to it. I'm going to talk about it in a few minutes. I asked this question last night. Uh, can Mennonites say amen? Is that okay? Let's hear it. Amen. amen. All right. That was music. And that has some terrific words that are important for all of us. In fact, so important that as we shared and as we made a hospital visits and home visits and so forth, we all kind of agreed that this day should have a theme. And it started last night with Pastor Phil 
did a great job, uh, and we're continuing today. And that theme is this. Are you in the book? Are you in the book? Now, I don't mean the Bible, although I'm holding it, but this Bible is going to represent a different book this morning. I'm going to start with that question, and I'm going to end with that question, and I'm going to give you an opportunity to make sure your name is in the book. Now, what book would I be talking about? I'm talking about the book that has Mary's name in it. I'm talking about the book that has every name of every person who's made their commitment to Jesus Christ in it. You see, well, let, me, let me share with you the passages, and then I'll do a little explaining, all right? Okay. Uh, from Revelation chapter 20, uh, the, book, the, the book of life is mentioned seven times in the Bible. Uh, some places uh, a little more obscure than others, but here's the most prominent one that most people know or have heard. It's from Revelation chapter 20, verse 12. It says, and the books, plural, and the books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. The dead were judged according to what they have done out of them. If anyone's name was not found written in this book of life, we could do no harm to this by saying he or she was thrown into uh, the lake of fire. Uh, you have to do a little work in understanding uh, uh, Revelation. But the books represent this. The books that are opened carry a detailed um, quip, if you will, of every person's life. Every man, woman, and child that's ever been born on this earth is in the book. It's called the book of life. That's why they're called plural. Uh, the idea, many books, all right? Uh, Mary was in the book. You're in the book. Chris, you're in the book. Where's my dear Cheryl? Cheryl, you're in the book. I'm in the book. You see, we all are. Now, the interesting thing about the book, the Bible says, is that uh, the, 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 the books are opened, and the Lord reviews your life. It's all there. It's all there in the book of life. So let's talk uh, a few minutes uh, about that. Obviously, we don't know what's written about Mary in the book. Uh, but we can uh, guess a little bit. You see, the Lord is making notes. As we move along in life, and the Lord is looking for certain things in your life, and when those things happen, they're noted. All right? Now, I don't know what Mary's would read, but let me give you an idea, or my idea. Let's say, all right, it wasn't too long ago that Mary went to be with the Lord. Someday down the road, this book is going to be opened, the book of life. And a lot of things are going to be revealed from it. But immediately, one reference was made to Mary. Now, I want to start, first of all, with what is possible. Eh, keep this with me. I keep losing it. I put it somewhere, and then I can't find it again. Uh, you know, Mary, uh, uh, her life was very interesting. Uh, and I, I was just so blessed uh, 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 by her. Uh, let's just say that uh, when, when the books are opened and Mary Magdalene, <laughs> uh, Hofer Glanzer, name comes up, maybe one of the first quips that we're going to see in there is something like, Mary, a gentle, gracious, giving, loving woman. And the Lord's going to smile. Perhaps there's going to be a note also that says Mary was a peacemaker. As I understand it, 
you're going to have to elect a new one because I think, <laughs> I think, I think she was the principal peacemaker uh, in the family. I don't know when it started, but I know it was there, and it has gone on uh, for years and years and years. And as we spoke, um, I thought it was interesting. Uh, I don't know who said it anymore now, but I'm one of the boys. Never heard a cross word out of her. Never heard a... Wow. <laughs> wow. Isn't that cool? Never heard a cro cross word out of her. Now, that doesn't mean she didn't get her blood pressure up once in a while. Okay? Yeah. Uh, especially, and I don't know who of you messed with her cupboards, but do you remember the time that somebody messed with her cupboards and put everything in totes? You did that. Oh, all right. Okay. I saw a picture of her. And she wasn't really happy in that picture. She was redoing that. All right. Now, that might have been a time that the Lord is watching to see what she's going to do. But uh, not a crossword uh, came from her. Probably a lot of those things went on. I, I can recall one more thing that maybe caused her to bite her lip. It was when little Timmy decided to go farming. Anybody remember that incident? Okay. Uh, you see, Timmy was going to be a farmer. You know, from, you know, he was kind of born into him. And I'm not sure, what, what, were you four years old? When, two years old. At two years old, he somehow got the Alice WD-45 started and engaged the clutch, and he was going farming. And uh, fortunately, Mom got there sometime <laughs> and slowed him down. Uh, we'll let you go farming now, Tim. You're a little more responsible. But, you know, Mary might have, might have gone, mm, 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 okay, you know, I'm not sure what, what, what was on there. But Mary had a life like you had a life. Mary had her challenges like you had her challenges. <laughs> she had times to bite her lip, and she had times to smile. That's the notations in, I keep losing my, in the book, Okay. That's probably some of the notation that we would see uh, there. I was listening to y'all last night, and I've been listening to you down through the months and, and uh, times that I've been able to be with you. And it was always mentioned, did you notice cooking, kitchen, food, and baking? Okay. Treats? Sweets? Huh, Tom? You don't have diabetes, do you? Okay, all right. Yeah. He, likes the, he likes sweets. I mean, he really does. Uh, uh, that, was, that was really a big portion uh, of her life. And I, I'm sure the Lord puts a notation on there. Good cook. Okay, probably a good cook. And uh, the boys would say, now you might, some of you ladies might argue with them, but the boys would say she was the best cook in Hutchinson County. Okay, now, some of you ladies might go, oh, it was a pastor. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah. But Tom can attest to that, okay. I do know this. Tom says she was the best clip, clip, clip. I, I, I practiced that for five, six times. What is it again? Clops. Clops. Anybody know what that is? Huh? Yeah. Well, good. She was the best one at it. Okay, all right. Clups. And uh, I don't know where you're going to go to your clups anymore. Maybe, maybe your sister knows how to, how, to, uh, 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 how to do that. I don't know. That was part of who Mary is. And, uh, you know, she's in the book. She's in the book. Another part of things that the Lord looks at is... What we do in life, maybe our married life, if we are married. And uh, Mary was about as handy outside the house as she was inside the house. And just as valuable. Okay? Uh, Mary was involved. She was involved in buying and selling. She was involved in this and that and the next thing. And I don't think she went to any future farmers of America's uh, classrooms. But she could judge hogs, couldn't she? She could just, did you know she had the uncanny ability to be within a pound or two of butcher hogs that they were sending off to market? They'd always come in and get her and come out and say, look at the hogs here, <laughs> okay? And she'd tell them what they weighed. And they did, didn't they? 
She had the uncanny uh, ability to do that. When, I, when I've read through some of the things about her life and what the family have shared, she reminds me of the woman in Proverbs. Remember that woman who's really valuable? And as you read through that section, you find that this woman could just about do it all. She, was, she could do the kitchen work. She could do the, 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 the farm work. She could do the financial investing. And if she had to, she could line you up, you know? She was pretty special that way. And I think the Lord would make note of that. Now, just a couple things before I get to what I think is the serious notations that, that the good Lord has, has made. One of them is uh, her nature and her faith. I think he noted in there many times, she just told me she loves me. Do you realize that in this book, every time you come and say, I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. The Lord says, smiles and makes a notation. He might say this morning, last night, uh, on the way to church coming back from something, my dear child said, she loved me. I think that's plastered all over in the book. I do know this too. I'm glad Mary isn't here because she would be upset with me. She wouldn't like me talking about her. She was one of those humble spirited ladies that you dare not overlook because of the tremendous faith that's there. But some of us do overlook that. We do. And I think Mary would say, but shh, 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 quit saying that. Yeah, I don't want to do that. Yeah, yeah. But I think she really did have a pretty special humble nature. Now I'm going to progress down to a little bit more serious. Uh, in life, we all have goals. We all have things that kind of stand out. And there's no doubt from the first time, and, and the reason I'm kind of here is because of my wife. Pat and Mary hit it off just bam, just like that. And that's the only reason I'm here. You know, I came along for the ride, you know. Okay, But Mary loved family. Mary, I'm going to say it again. Mary loved family. Family was almost her life. Okay? That's getting to be more and more rare in our liberal anything goes, uh, run off and come back and run off and come back society. A mother. A grandmother, great grandmother, a, a parishioner friend, a sister in the Lord, a sister in the church who actually cares. In fact, this is what brought us to the theme today. This is why I'm sharing what I'm sharing. Uh, her fervent desire in her younger years was to see her children come to the Lord. Come to the Lord. Because she made that commitment, she knew how wonderful that is. And so, she prayed, and she told me this herself. She prayed for you guys, okay? And I don't mean when she just got reminded of it. I mean the woman prayed for you. And what did she pray for? She prayed that one day, not only would this book of life reveal things about her children, but when the book is opened in red, I believe in red ink, I believe... 
See, I'm a Baptist, so I'm going to say this. I, I think it's written in the blood of Christ in the book. Her name became written in the Lamb's book of life. And because she knew that, because of her confidence, because of the way she believed in her faith, she wanted these children of hers to know the same thing. And so the process began. Prayer, Sunday school, teaching, vacation Bible school. Any of you that taught these, these, these old folks as kids, okay, had a part in that. So how does this work out? What's the notation going to be in the book under Mary Magdalene Hofer Glanzer concerning her children? Well, in 1971, in the Bridgewater Gym, in a Lundstrom Crusade, Susan K., that's your name? Okay. Susan K. made a commitment to Jesus Christ. The Lord smiled, and Mary was joyful. Some years later, uh, a son named Timothy. What's your middle name again? James? TJ, oh, okay, all right. Some years later. You know, and praise God uh, for Kevin Hofer. I got, uh, let, let's talk about Kevin Hofer. Uh, uh, Kevin Hofer led many, many people to the Lord, and I think he practiced on his guinea pig, Tim, here, because uh, they, they, they kind of were, were together and, and, and this and that, and, and, and as I understand it, Kevin kept saying, did you make your commitment? Did you make your commitment? Come on, did you make your commitment? Okay. Well, Tim didn't <laughs> until he get, got home and went into the kitchen with his mother. I don't know how old you were. Uh, you'll have to correct me. Nine, ten, I don't know. She had the privilege of leading her son to the throne of grace. Have you had that? Have any of you had the blessing of leading your child to the kingdom? My wife has had that blessing with our son. You'd think a Baptist preacher would have scared the bejeebies out of him enough to get him saved. No, 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 no. It was mom. Pat led him to the Lord. And whether it's Pat, whether it's you, whether it's Mary... It's in the book. That's in the book. And then little Tommy. All right. Uh, little Tommy. Tommy was under the same influence, same prayers, same Sunday school, all that kind of stuff. But at camp, I think you heard about the rapture. And I'm not sure that made you feel good. <laughs> okay. I don't know how you reacted to that. But he heard about the rapture. And you know, uh, how many of you have ever been camp counselors or run camps, Christian? Uh, okay. You know that the last night, the bonfire, everything is built up, and we have the kids coming forward, and they come to the Lord, and then we go back home with them to their home churches, and we try to get them going uh, in the faith. We know, not Tom. Mm -hmm. You know what Tom did? He went home. In the same kitchen. With the same mother. And she led him to the Lord. Tell me. Tell me. The intensity of faith. From a godly mother. From a godly father. Doesn't have results. There's three notations under Mary a Glanzer that are just absolutely fantastic. Now, she got help. 
Mary didn't do that on her own. She got help from the Lord God himself, from the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, not only did she want her children to know what it means to be born again, She loved you. She loved you. She loved you. And it's obvious you love her. But along with that is a fervent desire to see each and every one of you. Not only in the book, because you're already in the book, but in the Lamb's book of life. Nothing in the world would give her greater enjoyment or joy than to know that. And then going down the next generation to the youngsters there as they get old enough to understand. I want to come back to the Bible passage that I started with which ends by saying, if anyone's name is not written in the Lamb's Book of Life, the end isn't very good. The end isn't very good at all. And so I promised Mary, and I made a covenant with the family, that today I would give you, everyone in this sanctuary, an opportunity to put your name in the Lamb's book of life. Maybe it's already there. Praise God, glory to Jesus. Give him all the glory. But it might not be. I preach in church after church after church, and ministers pretty much say the same thing. Uh, You know, Got to be born again. Got to know the Lord. Got to do that. Yeah, yeah. We can sing the last hymn. We go out and we have coffee and go home. We're not doing that today. Because God is serious and his business is serious. And I'm serious about the God, the Lord's business. And so in a moment, I'm going to ask everyone to bow their head and close their eyes. Not, not yet, but bow your head and close your eyes. And I'm going to share with you a call. And I'm not going to ask you to come up front like we do in my Baptist revivals. But I'm going to ask you to sit where you're at and just quietly put up your hand and take it down. I'll take note of that. A little bit later, we'll get together. And I I would be so joyful to introduce you to the throne of grace through Jesus Christ. That's your name. Where's my Bible? I keep losing my Bible. (laughs) That your name is not only in the book of life, but your name in red letters would be in the Lamb's book of life. So bow your heads, close your eyes, Don't worry about the person ahead of you or behind you. Uh, That's immaterial. And I share with you the opportunity to leave the darkness and the blackness and the helplessness of life. The sin that pulls you back even though you want to pull the other way. This is an opportunity for you to make a change, to make a difference, to make your life joyful, filled with joy, and a different notation under your name in the book of life. If you've never done that and you want to do that, today is the day, now is the time. So I'm going to ask you, Very quietly, slip your hand up. I will take note of it. And we will share 
perhaps later on. Don't let this opportunity go by, especially if you wonder about yourself. Praise God. Amen and amen. I close the way I started. Are you in the book? The Lamb's book. I pray you are. Let's finish with um, the song Sweet Beulah Land.
Thank God Mary's in the book, the Lamb's book of life. Pray you are too. I'd like to uh, offer a closing prayer, at the same time a prayer for the breaking of the bread and the meal. And then, I, did I get this right? We'll kind of be ushered out slowly to kind of make this whole thing work. So sit tight. Uh, I think everybody's going to be ushered out uh, in a moment here. So let us close with a prayer. Lord, as family and friends, we leave this celebration of Mary's life and may we be blessed to have been here. In each of our hearts, may there be a joyfulness for the privilege of having lived side by side in the church, in the community, as, as, as farmers together with someone who was such a special creation as our dear Mary Magdalene Hofer Glancer. Now, Lord, bless the table talk, the fellowship, the remembrance stories. As we break bread together, we want to pause and thank you, Jesus, who is our bread of life. Amen.
Will the congregation please stand as we recess?